welcome reflect once again on this so in this video i'll be showing you from start to finish on how i do the background manipulation here is the before and here is the after uh, this picture was actually taken with canon 60d so let's set up godos ad200 pro and the tt 520 flash in conjunction with two beauty dish 90 by 90 centimeter so it was actually taken on a 5 by 15 backdrop as you can see there's no there's no much space there so i'll be teaching you how to expand your background and also how to remove your model perfectly from the background and also at the same time how to remove blemishes from the background uh people would actually do complain that i do skip the first step which is how i remove my model from the background so i'll be showing you that step in this video how i actually remove the model from the background and also I extend the background and clean the background to my own satisfaction so I shoot this picture in raw so I'm going to do the basic adjustments using my camera raw before I, I go straight into Photoshop so now let's start I know like the way the picture is it's not so bright to my liking so that's why I shoot on raw so that I can have a possibility of making adjustments later on so I'm going to increase my highlight a little bit I will bring up the shadow a little bit the white is okay for me then the exposure i'll bring it up a little bit a little bit then i'll go to my hsl adjustments here's my hsl adjustment over here so over the saturation i'm going to increase the skin tone a little bit then i'll go under the luminance also click on the luminance i will increase the brightness of the skin which is this i will increase it so once i'm done with the setting just have to open it in my photoshop click on open so i'll wait for it to load up So once it does, here is what our picture looks like. The first thing I will do now, I won't be doing any retouching. I will only be showing you the manipulation aspect of it. I won't be showing how I do the retouching because it's going to take a hell of a time. If you want to know how I do my retouching, there's another video entirely on that. You can actually go through my videos on my channel. You will see the retouching video there and you can actually pick 18 or 2 from that also. So what I'll be doing right now, I'll be starting with my cropping first. I love using 4x5 size which is the Insta Instagram size for normal pictures and I love posting on Instagram the most that's my best social media platform for posting my picture so I'll go to my crop tool here's where my crop is located I'll click on it the shortcut key for crop is by clicking on C once you click on C it's going to take you to the crop panel so I'm just going to expand to whatever area I want it to fill up so I'll expand it then at, it seems as if she's bending to this side a little bit so i'll just twist the picture a little bit to make a little bit of adjustment there so once i'm done and i see the selection is okay just have to click on my okay and wait for it to make the selection for us as you can see right now it has done just that for us so that's the first step the next step is for you to do the background extension so the easy and the best way for you to do the background extension is by just filling the background the, this other side by filling it with the background that is actually there before to make it look more realistic enough so we're doing just that right now firstly we just have to duplicate this our layer we are working on our background layer right now and as you all know me i don't love working on my background layer in case i make any mistake i can easily go back to the previous layer and make amendment there so i'll just duplicate my background layer now by clicking on ctrl j Ctrl J, as you can see, we have two layer right now, which is my background and my layer one. So the layer one is where I'm going to be working on right now. So for me to do the background extension, I just have to click on my rectangle marker tool, which is over here. I'll click on it. Then I'll drag over this area first. As you can see right now, when I make the selection, I'll, I'll make sure it's not touching any part of my model, DBR outfit or any part of her skin. I'll make sure I avoid all those parts. So once I'm done with the selection of this right hand side, just have to click on my Ctrl plus T for free transform as you can see it brought these uh, symbols for us so here is where we are going to be doing the extension so for you to do the extension now you need to hold down your shift key hold down your shift key and drag from this edge over here so once you drag it's going to extend the background for you automatically so once you see you are no longer seeing the rough edges or the uh the, this thing over here so you just have to leave leave your mouse before you lift your shift key if not it's going to do another thing for you so firstly remove your hand from the mouse then remove your hand from the shift key so once you're done with this selection you just have to click on your ok then click on ctrl d to deselect so you come to this left hand side also you do the same thing here make sure it's not touching any part of your model let us zoom in to see that as you can see i avoid this side 
So let's zoom out now. Let's zoom out. Ctrl T for free transform again. Hold down the shift key. Still drag to this side also. Once we are no longer seeing the blemishes again. Zoom out. Once you are no longer seeing the blemishes again. So once you're done with that, stick, click on your OK. Ctrl D to deselect. So we are going to do the same thing for this downside also. Click. Do the same thing here. Make sure you are still avoiding any parts of our outfits. So after that, Ctrl T to for tra free transform. Then hold down the shift key. You drag down also. Then Ctrl D to deselect. Once you are no longer seeing any parts of the blemishes you want to remove. So that being said, now we're done with the second aspect, which is the background extension. So the next step is for we to remove the model from the background right now. As you all know, we are working on the layer one, but we want to remove the model from the background now. And we, in case we make any mistake, we can easily go back again. So the next two we'll be doing now will still duplicate the layer one we are working on by clicking on Ctrl J again, so that we can have layer one copy. So after that, the tools I'll be using right now will be my quick selection tool, my polygonal lasso tool, to remove the picture perfectly for me. So here is the step I do in removing backgrounds from my picture. So I'll be showing you all those steps right now. Firstly, if you're using the higher version of Photoshop from CC17 above, you should be able to have these features on your Photoshop. So you just have to click on your quick selection, which is over here, or you can click on W. Once you click on W key, it's going to take you directly to quick selection. But if you're using the lower version of Photoshop, like CC15 below, I don't think you actually have this option. So the next option for you is to use your pencil to copy that perfectly, or you're going to take your time using the polygonal laser tool. So once you click on the quick selection tool, you just have to click on your select object. Once you click on the select object, wait for it to load up. So once it does, as you can see, it actually did a great job for us, but the job is not all that perfect, as you can see right now. It actually give us a, a nice selection, but it's not give us the perfect selection as you can see over here. So most of the time, there's the issue we face while using our quick selection tool. So it tends to give us some rough edges. The reason is that, as you can see the chair she's sitting on, it actually blends in with the background we are using. So the AI that is in charge of it can not tell the difference between the background and the chair. So here's the reason why we have some issue while cropping out uh, pictures like this using the quick selection. It's not going to give us all the perfect selection, but it's going to give us a start and it's going to minimize the work we are going to do. So here I'll be using my polygonal laser tool to, to make the rest of the adjustment. So I just have to zoom into whatever area it is, as you can see right now. So I'll just go to my polygonal laser tool. I'll click on it. I'll zoom in. So this time around, I'll be using my addition and subtraction to do the selection. As you can see right now, select part of the background. So and I want to remove that. So I'll be using subtraction for now. I'll click on my subtraction. So I will scroll, I will click on it. I'll click on it. As you can see, I've already removed from the subtraction. But this side, I'll be using addition to add to this place. I'll just go back to addition. I will add it. So that's how we're going to do to we'll finish every other thing. So here is going to be subtraction again. So I'll just go back to subtraction, as you can see. So I'll make sure this place is on subtraction, as you can see right now, we've removed from the selection. So here is going to be addition, so I'm going to take it back to addition from here, then I'll select over this area, I'll select over it, as you can see, so I'll select over this side, you can take your time to do that, so that you can have a perfect selection so i'm going to f fast forward this process I'll So let's say we're done with the selection. As you can see, I took my time doing the selection from the chair to every part. 
I make sure I crop it out perfectly. So after we're done with the selection now, I know most of you what you do is hit on the delete key or invert before you delete. So let me give you the best option for you to remove background perfectly. So after you're done with the selection, you just have to click on your max. Here's the max icon over here. Once you click on it, automatically it's going to put the background in the max. So we have to turn on the remaining two layers below. As you can see, we have our model without the background, which you perfectly remove. But we still have an issue. If you pay attention to my cropping, you can see on the crown, on the crown over here, I actually crop the background excess. The reason is that I can't actually take my time to remove all the strands in the crown. So I want to do a batch remover. So for me to do that, that's the major reason why I created this max over here. So in case you have an issue like that, maybe the air strand, you want to restrict, you want to keep the air strand, but you want to remove the background in the air. So just create the max for it, turn off all the background below, then double click on the max. So once you double click on the max, it's going to open another Photoshop panel for you. So click on the second option, which is this brush I have over here. So I'm going to reduce the size. So I will scroll over it and automatically the AI is going to remove the background without touching the crown for me. It's going to detect if you are using a seamless background like this, a one color background, it's going to do the job for you perfectly. So you just have to scroll over it. It's going to delete the background from the picture and leave the picture alone. So as you can see, that's what we just did right now. We actually delete the background from the crown and all the strands in the crown still remain intact. So once we're done with that, you just have to click on our OK. So wait for it to load up and here is our model without the background perfectly removed. So this is the first step people say I do skip in my video. As you can see, it takes a lot of time. This is the most other step when it comes to background manipulation. So I actually did it for you guys in this video. So the next step is for me to now clean the background perfectly. After that, you can now start bringing in all the files you want to use for our manipulation. So before that, let's go, go on a short break. We're going to come back in the next one minute. So in case you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file, from my overlays down to my color lookup, which is my lot file. So you just have to scroll down to your video. So under the comment, this is my description. So it's not going to load the description for you. You just have to click on show more, click on it. So it's going to show all the options. Once it does that, just click on my store link. So here's my store link. Once you click on it, it's going to take you directly to my store. So you can actually select any file you want from the color lookup. This is a light skin lots. This is a feather which I used in my recent video. This is 100 premium baby overlays. This is my first video course. This video course entails on how to download all the files I want. The site I use in downloading all my files free of charge, including my Photoshop panels also. This includes my PNG files. This includes all my packs, all my picture editing files, my premium overlay, my PNG, my flying fabric, my color lookup, my preset. So once you buy this, you've already bought everything apart from this one so here is my flying fabrics here is my in case you want to give me any project for me to work on here is my color lookup here is my background overlay and here is my preset file so in case you're interested in buying anyone you can actually go for them the good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency any currency of your choice you can buy with any currency of your choice so here are the here are parts of the file i have here here is my glitter here is a ba here are balloons from 0 to 100, from 0 to 9, and A to Z for you to use for your for your numbering for a birthday or any other thing you want it for. So you can actually get this one also. My PNG files, which is the flying fabrics. Here are my overlays. Let me show you some of the overlays. Here are some of my overlays right here. So you can actually get them and enhance your picture editing skill. Here are some of my PNG files also. There are more of that if you want to buy them. As you all know, we have actually turned off the remaining two background below. So let's turn it on back right now, as you can see. Here's our background looking all that rough. So we're actually going to clean the background. As you can see, these are model layer. For now, we have nothing to do with our model layer. So let's turn it off right now. Let's turn it off, as you can see, I've switched off the layer. So back to my background one, I'm going to duplicate the background one once again by clicking on Ctrl G. You know, the first thing we did is we removed the model from the background. This time around, we are going to remove the background from the model so we are going to remove we're going to delete the model from the background entirely just the way we did the first one 
so by clicking or by creating a new layer which is this layer one copy two so i'm going to hold down my control key i'll hold down my control key then i'll click on the max i just created over here i'll click on it as you can see it brought back our selection for us this is the selection we actually made the other time so i'll just have to go to my select under my select i'll go to modify under modify i'll click on expand i'll click on ok then i'll expand by eight after that i'll click on my ok as you can see right now so let me turn off the two layer below because this is the actual layer we are working on right now so i just turned it off right now so i'll just have to hit on my delete key ctrl d to select as you can see we actually deleted our model from the background our background our model from the background the first thing we did we delete the background from the model right this time around we delete the model from the background so we can actually proceed to the next step now which is blowing out the background to make it smooth so i'll just have to go to my filter under my filter i'll click on blur then i'll click on my gaussian blur wait for it to load though then i'll increase to the radius i want it to be think about 115 is okay i'll click on my okay but you guys might notice that i was going on the background is already reflecting on my model as you all know before we start before we start to blow the background we actually turned off our model layer which is above so once i turn it on back right now as you can see nothing is wrong with our model which is perfectly okay but the shadow that's on our foot is no longer there because we actually blurred it out so we are going to bring the shadow back how are you going to do that we are going to create a max on the area we just apply a gaussian blow on just click on your max then you pick your brush your normal brush you make sure it's at 100% opacity 100% opacity once the color here is already white you are going to change your brush color to black change it to black color then you reduce the size then you scroll over the area you want the shadow to come back to as you can see you actually brought the shadow back on this tool right now so that being said we are actually done with basically everything we need to do so the next thing you can actually leave your picture like this just go jump straight to color grading but here is where i start my manipulation once you're done with the first three steps, which is the background extension, background remover, and copying out the model perfectly, I don't think you have any issue again when it comes to photo manipulation. So the next thing you just for you to just go to where all your files are located, search for the one you want to use. So I'll be bringing in all the files I'll be using right now. Firstly, I just have to go to my file manager. I'll go to where my files are located, which is on, under my picture. So I'll look for where my files are located. I'll look for the file I'll be making use of. Then I'll scroll down. Okay, here's the file I'll be using for as my overlay. Here's the second overlay. So let me look for my first overlay and drag it to my Photoshop. So this is going to be my first overlay. You just have to drag it to my Photoshop. Wait for it to load up. Then I'll just adjust it to whatever area I want it to be. Once I'm done with the adjustments, just have to click on my. Have to click on my OK. But as you all know. There's something I love using for my background manipulation. We brought it in now. While placing it, the shadow on the foot is no longer there. So for we to bring the shadow back, you just have to change the blend mode from normal, bring it down to soft light. As you can see, click on our key as you can see, our shadow is back. So that being said, now I start bringing in the other overlays. Just have to go to my file manager again. Then I'll search for the other overlay. Here's the other overlay. Just drag it to my Photoshop bring it drag then i'll adjust it to whatever area i want it to be i will adjust it to whatever area i want it to be as you can see while i'm dragging it i'm still making sure that the floor is still where this tool is going to be so make sure you make your adjustments all right if not you're not going to have a nice manipulation so i'll click on my okay then place it but you can see it's not reaching the floor and here is a little bit sharp which is making making it look a lot like a manipulation but wants it to look more realistic enough so how are we going to do that so let's create our max on it once we create our max just go to your gradients automatically what was why this is on white your brush color has to be on black just as i mentioned earlier as you can see the brush already on black i just go to my gradients then i'll drag from down as you can see drag from down once i'm no longer seeing that there once i'm done the next thing i just have to do is to change my blend mode from normal i'll change it to soft light again as you can see actually added that but the issue is that 
issue there is that it's not reflecting all that bright it's a little bit dull for my liking so the next thing i'll be doing i will duplicate the one i just brought in now which is this i'll duplicate it again by clicking on ctrl g as you can see right now so it's going to bring it's going to pop up the color more for me but this time around i want to spice up the work a little bit i'm going to add a little bit of blur to the one i just duplicated right now which is the upper one so I'll just go to my pick tool, then I'll go to my filter, I'll go to my blur, under my blur, I'll click on radial blur, I'll wait for it to load up, I'll use my, I'll use it as 20 pixel, 20 pixel, then from spin, I'll remove it from spin, I'll change it to zoom, then I'll just click on my OK, I'll wait for it to load up so I can see the effects on it. As you can see right now, it gives us this blurry effect. But if it is too much, you can actually just go back, reduce the radius to maybe 10 or 15 until you see fit though. But I love it the way it is right now. So you can start bringing in other things. So I'll still go back to my file manager. This time around, I'm not bringing in an overlay. I'll just go back, I'll look for where my PNG files are. I'll click on it. Then I'll search for the PNG file I'll be using. You know we are doing something like the manipulation we are doing is related to a garden so i'm going to be bringing something that will look familiar as if she was actually in the garden as if that was the actual setup of it while we're doing while we are doing the shoot instead of we be manipulating it right now so here's what i'll be bringing in right now i just have to drag it to my photoshop again i'll drag it as you can see everything i'm bringing right now is at the back i'll just drag it i will extend it to whatever location i want it to be I will reduce the size. I'll bring it to whatever location I want it to be. Just have to click on my OK, wait for it to lose up. But I don't like the way it is. I can just drag it down a little bit. Okay, so but it's a little bit too bright on my liking. Just click on Ctrl M to bring down to bring the brightness down for me. Just drag down, drag down as you can see. So the next thing I'll be bringing in. Let's go back to my file manager. Let's see what we can bring in again. Let's look for a material that we can bring in. Let me see if I can see anyone. I'm still searching. Let's see if we can see anyone that will go to go without what to do. Okay, here is a sign, but I think I have more advanced one than this. So let me keep searching for it if I can find it anywhere. Okay, here it is over here. So I just have to drag it to my Photoshop also again. So I'll reduce the size so that it's going to fit to the location I want it to be, as you can see. So here's the way I want it to be. Just have to click on my OK. So you can see right now, it fits in perfectly. So I can actually write anything I want over here. As you can see, the actual picture which I actually posted, as you can see, it's perfectly OK. So let me see, let us bring in another file and we'll call it a day for our manipulation. So we'll just go back to my file manager again. Let's see if we can see any file to bring in. We can actually try to bring in this one, but it should be too manipulated. So let's look for another thing we can bring in. Okay, I'll be using this rock right here. Let's just drag it into Photoshop. So you can just decide to, man to use any file you want. I'll just have to reduce the size, reduce the size till I see it. I'll click on my OK, but this time around, it has already spoiled our manipulation. The reason is that it's below the chair. So we are going to drag it above the chair. By doing that, you just have to drag it, as you can see, which is perfectly OK. So we can adjust it to whatever location we want it to be, as you can see, which is OK. We are done with the man manipulation. As you all know, the first step to my color grading is actually adding a little bit of vintage to darken the edges of the picture for me a little bit. So for me to do that, I'll just go to my rectangle marker. So I'll long click on it and I'll pick, pick up my clip car marker to under it. I'll hold down my shift key. I'm going to circle around my model like this. Once I'm done, I'll just click on Ctrl Shift plus I to invert my selection. As you can see right now, I want to add a vintage to the entire picture. So for you to do that, we are going to click on the uppermost layer before we make the selection, before we make this circle selection. 
So after we're done with this, just go to our adjustment layer over here. Then we'll click on our solid color, load solid color, then we fill it with 100% black. Once we're done with that, make sure we click on our max. Then we'll go to property, under property, we're going to increase our feather to about 700 or so. I think 747 is okay by me. I'll click on my OK, then I'll reduce the opacity, I'll bring down the opacity, I'll bring it down, bring it down. 24 is okay for me. So now let's turn it off and turn it on. Let's see what it looks like. Here's the before of the vintage, and here is what the after looks like. Here's the before, and here's the after. So the next thing is for me to color grade. As you all know, I have a favorite color lookup I love using the most, which is my Mela chocolates. Just go back to my adjustment layer, click on my adjustment layer. Then I'll click on my color lookup, load 3D loads. Then I'll drag down, I'll search my Mela chocolate. Wait for it to load up, boom, automatically it has done. It did the job we wanted to do. Give us a low light image, it cools down all the color we wanted to cool down and everything. So the next thing I'll just add a little bit of skin color to my model. Just have to go back to my adjustment layer again. Click on our color lookup. Click on load 3D lots, we scroll down, then I'll click on my natural color. All these lots are available for sale. You can actually go to my store and get them there. As you can see, automatically it did a hell of a job for us. Look at the skin tone it actually gives us. It didn't even give us a skin tone alone. It color graded both the skin and also the model together and also the background and everything all together. But if the opacity is too much, maybe the color is too much for you. Just have to come down to the opacity and bring it down till you see it. I think this color is okay by me. As you can see, we've actually done what we promised to do. So that's about this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And also turn on the notification icon. If you have any question, you can contact me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you're interested in getting any of my files, they are available for sale. You can actually go to my store and get them there. And you can contact me on my WhatsApp if you have any issue. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you guys on my next tutorial. One love.